Over the weekend I interviewed a retired roughneck that worked on the Deepwater Horizon. Deepwater Horizon was an ultra-deep water, dynamically positioned, semi-submersible offshore drilling rig. Here is a transcript of our conversation. Me, I'm a roughneck. Well, I was a roughneck, I mean, a few years ago I'm a little too old, a little too slow now. Besides, I got a little money now, I don't have to be a roughneck and I am married, got a nice home. Her name is Samantha but she likes to be called Sam. She is probably busy out in the kitchen someplace. Besides, she doesn't hear very well. Shame, too she's so pretty and everything. You'll meet her. Sit down, as I was saying I was a roughneck. Well, no, that doesn't mean exactly what you think it means. A roughneck is an oil field worker specifically, a guy on a drilling crew. Call M roughnecks if you, like if you call a section hand on the railroad a dandy dancer or a garage hand a grease monkey. Same time, you work around a drilling crew for a while, you're going to be a roughneck in every sense of the word, the derrick floor of the deep water horizon is no place for a guy with a bow tie, cause when you have to fool around with drilling holes that go farther down in the ground than it is from the top of Mount Everest down to sea level. Yeah, sure they do. Time I was on deep water horizon, we got this one well that went down below 4,132 feet of water. That was a record. But next January, they plan to drop one much deeper, that, friend, will be quite a hole. So what do you think about out there I asked. Sure, I don't think there's an oil man in the world that don't wonder one time or another what's down there besides rock and oil and gas. Oil that's made out of trees that died 20 million years ago. Oil that's made out of dinosaur bones. Oil that's maybe, made out of the flesh and blood of men, maybe, that beat each other to death with a stone axe, ate saber-toothed tiger for lunch. Yet, yeah, you get to wondering. You look at the cores that come up from way down there and sometimes there's little shells, trilobites mostly, that was alive when Manhattan Island, where New York is was under half a mile of ice. We found something once, me and Donnie. A and D. Something found us. I'll tell you about it if you want to hear, that is why you're here right? Yes sir that's why I made the trip, after our phone call I just had to meet you, so please tell me your story. He continued. Clear down to around 5400 feet. We'd set casing that began to get water so we had to stop drilling and cement off. Well, you see, when water begins to seep in the hole, you pull your drill pipe, then you let down a cementing shoe inside the casing, and you plug up the bottom of the hole, casing, and all, with quick hardening waterproof cement. Then, when it's hard, you drill through the cement and go on down and the cement outside the casing at the bottom keeps the water out. Well. We had the drill pipe all pulled and racked. The cement was setting, see? So we were shut down, waiting for it to harden. We'd been coring just before. Well, you see, a, uh, a core drill is hollow. And, as the bit digs down, it stuffs the drillings up inside it so, when you pull it out, you've got a sample of the kind of stuff you're going through. And a geologist can tell a lot from that. So. There's nobody around the rig except me that night. The rest of the crew's gone into town. I was toasting some pork chops over the porch for myself when I heard a boat pulling up. Look out, it's Donny, the geologist, and I give him a hello. Come and have a pork chop. I yelled to Donny. Where's everybody? Donny asked. They all went to town. I'm the whole crew. I said. Yeah. I wondered where you was. The boss said you'd be in here about three. Donnie quick to get to work, I was quick to get to Eden. Hey, where's that core? That's what I came up here to look at. Donnie said. 
Ah, back there on the bench. I said as I sit down to eat. Didn't you say you were all alone here? Donnie asked. I thought I heard somebody talking. Really I guess I should have a quick look around. I don't see anybody. I said. When do you finish cementing? He asked. This morning. Last tower only made about ten feet of holes so they shut down before we'd get flooded out of house and home. Funny thing about that water. He said. Oughtn't to be any at that level, according to my figuring. Well, there is. I said. Is it salt? Donnie asked. Sure, right out of the bottom of the ocean. As I tried to answer his question, he started talking more about the core. That's funny. Well, maybe I'll be able to tell something from the core. Yeah, I hope so. Well, last core I looked at, I've sworn we were getting into shale. Haven't seen none yet, from the cuttings. I snapped back getting hungry now. You know, you never can tell what's down there. Once you get it all mapped and plotted out, all the strata, and all you know is what comes out of the hole. Yup. I'd like to go down there sometime, if I was little enough. Donnie responded you never get you down a hole. You'd fit. You're skinny. I said. I'll stay up here and look at the cores, bud. Where is that one? Behind you. Over there. Pointing and still thinking about my supper. Donnie walked off, as he did something caught my ear. Somewhere above, a piece of metal scrapes. Donnie shouted over to me, there's somebody up there on that board. You're crazy. There's nobody up there. I just checked everything. The old drill pipes moved or something with the ocean, you know how the ocean rigs are, they move like a boat. Donnie pointed, if there another light over here? I saw it this time, just glowing moving coming for me. Stay paranoid my friends.